Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the Buddha, the blessed noble and fully self-awakened one. So uh, because it's uh, spring and because the next uh, moon day is celebrating the Buddha himself, I thought it would be a nice thing to do the uh, seven factors of enlightenment and the five spiritual faculties. Uh, they double over on certain ones. Uh, so what we have is uh, sadha, which translates as confidence, and that matches with insight, with uh, wisdom, and then we have effort, which, which supports uh, concentration or focus. Uh, and then we have calmness, which twins with interest. And then finally, equanimity, which twins with, in, with um, investigation of the Dharma or the insight. And uh, holding all that together is, of course, awareness. So... Uh, I've mixed these five spiritual faculties with the seven factors of enlightenment there. Now, what I want to center on is this whole quality of uh, sadha, which translates uh, the two words I prefer rather than faith is confidence and trust. When I use the word confidence, I have confidence in, it seems to center upon my relationship to what it is I'm confident in. But when I use the word I trust, I trust the Dharma, I trust the teaching, it seems to center more upon what it is that I'm putting my confidence in. So it's just me, I suppose, with words. So it's confidence and trust, I think, gets close to the idea of this uh, sadha, translating the uh, Pali word. Now, this is twinned with uh, the word panya, and there are three levels of this um, uh, wisdom. The first one is when we come to hear something. So our initial interest in what we hear. Now, that will actually uh, give us some sort of confidence. If it doesn't, then, of course, we don't take it any further. And the more confidence we have, the more we'll want to read about the Dharma. And the more you do that, the more, of course, you find the opportunity to think about it and it becomes your own bit of intellectual knowledge. And then finally, that leads us into the actual practice, the Vipassana, which is the final uh, stage of this process of insight. And it's through Vipassana that these things are realized by us. They become our own personal experience. So that is all supported with this confidence, this trust. And if that begins to fade, then, of course, uh, you find yourself losing interest. Now, what is the uh, enemy of that, of course, is doubt. And um, this is a sort of skeptical doubt. It's not the doubt that the Buddha wants us to have, which, which uh, raises up that interest, a sense of wonder. You know, is the Buddha right about this? <clears throat> This skeptical doubt is what stops you doing things. And it's often because of fear of failure, or it could be because uh, you, you, you're fearful of it undermining your treasured opinions. So for instance, if you were uh, committed to scientific materialism, and it turns out that there is a transcendence, then of course that, that does undermine your position a bit. And, uh, and that's always fearful for us because we identify ourselves with our opinions and our views. So sometimes this skeptical doubt will just stop us, you know, mid-tracks. It will just stop us from doing something. Now, the other doubt that we can have is in the Buddha himself and, of course, in the teacher, heaven forbid. But that doesn't mean that we should uh, not be, shall we say, uh, uh, should not lose our critical faculties of the teacher. You know, we're not supposed to be enslaved to our teachers. And often we lose uh, 
uh, certain confidence in the practice. And I think that comes because we have some idea of progress. Um, and if it doesn't fit our idea of progress, then you think, oh, well, you know, the teaching doesn't work. And often it turns back into us that, you know, it, it works for some, but not for me. I'm no good. I'm useless at this. So there's also a doubt in oneself. And that comes often about by comparison. You see somebody who started with you and they're fully liberated and you're still hanging around being depressed and anxious. So that, so that tends to, you tend to think, well, I can't do it. Everybody else can, but I can't. So these types of doubts have to be undermined by, you know, recognizing the wrong view, the wrong reason as to why doubt has arisen. And of course, that doubt will be completely undermined by really through the practice. And no matter how little the insight is, that insight is supporting our confidence. So that final uh, point about the self, um, the whole uh, teaching of the Buddha leads to the conclusion that everybody must become liberated. It's not possible for anybody not to become liberated, no matter how long it takes, because that which is trying to understand why it is suffering and seeking the end of suffering is what is actually liberated by that process. So uh, we can say that it's a categorical imperative. It's an absolute must that whether you want to or not, like it or not, uh, we will be driven towards full liberation and awakening. So that's, there's a bit of hope there for us all. So um, just finally, uh, this uh, confidence, we can develop it. We can develop a confidence in the Buddha, for instance. Now that's if you've got a sort of devotional heart. So you read about the Buddha, uh, you can imagine yourself listening to the Buddha when uh, you're reading the scriptures. Actually now, a lot of the scriptures are uh, on, on uh, YouTube as um, just delivered by somebody. Uh, there's a couple of websites that do it too. So there, there are certain ways in which you can develop a relationship with the historical Buddha. Uh, with the developing in the Dharma, of course, is really just, you know, not expecting great progress, just keep at it little by little. And the Sangha, uh, that's our other uh, commitment, shall we say, is uh, recognizing that, you know, there are people who are progressing, there are people who are fully liberated. Uh, even now, there's, uh, there's somebody in Thailand called Ajahn, oh dear, come on, memory, memory. Uh, <laughs> It's gone. Don't worry, it'll, uh, there is a, 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 an Ajahn in Thailand, Ganha, that's his name, Ajahn Ganha, uh, who is recognized as fully liberated. And he is a nephew of Ajahn Chah, for those of you who know Ajahn Chah. So uh, I can only hope my words have been of some assistance. That they have not caused even greater confusion and that by your commitment to the practice you will be liberated from all suffering sooner rather than later.